Welcome everybody. Happy Friday. Uh, welcome to our weekly Outlook webinar. My name is Ilyan Yaltov. I'm the creator of the Quarter Theory and uh, also the founder of AllThingsForex.com and TraderTape.com. I'm hosting a popular program called the All Things Forex Broadcast. So you have the opportunity to follow along with me on a weekly basis, daily basis, not just every Friday morning on this webinar, but every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, and you can listen to the All Things Forex broadcast for my outlook on the latest developments in the foreign exchange market. I'd like to thank our friends at FX3.com for putting together these series of uh, webinars. And you can also listen to the All Things Forex broadcast, by the way, on FX3.com. It is syndicated there. What we're here to discuss today are the top 10 spotlight events for the trading week ahead of us and prepare for it. And it's going to be another interesting uh, trading week now that we especially had news that the European Union officials have decided to schedule a new European Union summit. Now, the big event of this week, as we discussed last Friday, is the European Union on October 23rd, this Sunday. There's news today that uh, European leaders are scheduling a new one uh, to take place by October 26th which is next Wednesday. Now, it could be next Wednesday, but it could be a little bit early. So it begs the question, why didn't the European Union officials just make the European Union summit on Sunday a two- or three-day summit if they needed more time to discuss things? Now, one thing that I have been saying all along that European Union leaders are, are good at is promising things and buying time. Now, these are a couple of things they're really good at. Problem is that very little is being de delivered on these promises. And depending on the outcome of that European Union summit on Sunday and then ultimately the next one that has to take by Wednesday, that is going to dictate the future fate of the euro and a lot of other major currencies, by the way, and equity markets and so forth, as everybody is paying close attention to the latest headlines from the Eurozone, it certainly has been creating a lot of uncertainty and volatility in the markets, as we have witnessed throughout this week. Now, France and Germany has, have released a joint communique today in which they said there will be a uh, second summit meeting that has to take place by October 26th. They said that um, they're going to need more time to discuss the plan for how to contain the Eurozone debt crisis, but may not be enough time to deliver final decisions on Sunday. That's why they needed more time. So without a doubt, that would be the main event to watch next week, the European Union Summit. We're going to start the trading week, however, with an important report from New Zealand, a couple of inflation reports from down under that uh, are coming up next week. On Monday night is the New Zealand Consumer Price Index, and then on Tuesday night is the Australian Consumer Price Index. Now, why is that important? It's uh, important because these consumer price indexes, which are the main measures of inflation, in both of these countries down under, are unlike other major economists who report their CPI numbers every month. In New Zealand and Australia, these report every quarter. So you have to pretty much wait for three months until you get to see what the actual inflation index, consumer price index, is in New Zealand or in Australia. So that puts even more importance on these reports, and especially more importance on the New Zealand Consumer Price Index because it is scheduled to come only a couple of days before the Reserve Bank of New Zealand announces its decision on interest rates and monetary policy, which is a, another one of our top 10 spotlight events. So needless to say, this is going to be an important couple of economic events from New Zealand on Monday night and also Wednesday afternoon with the Reserve Bank of New Zealand decisions, uh, interest rate announcements. So let's go ahead and take a look at the daily chart of uh, the New Zealand dollar versus the U.S. dollar to uh, see what are the recent 
developments. And this, by the way, chart is very similar to the charts I'm going to be showing you later on with uh, the Australian dollar versus the US dollar and also the euro versus the US dollar. Very, very similar trend developments there for all of these currency majors versus the dollar. The New Zealand dollar reached new record highs uh, a few months ago. In July, it reached as high as um, 0.8842. And that's a record high for the queue against the dollar. However, <clears throat> on a second attempt to move higher, the New Zealand dollar encountered some resistance up here at uh, 0.8571. And it started losing momentum and began to reverse. And a lot of these major currencies that I'll show you also had similar developments with the uh, all of them beginning to drop versus the U.S. dollar. New Zealand dollar declined below the 80 cents level, and uh, it quickly moved into the new 1,000 pip range between 0.70 and 0.80 cents, reaching as low as 0.7466, the low from uh, October the 4th. This produced a decline for the New Zealand dollar of about 1,100 pips from 0.8571 uh, to uh, 0.7466, it's about 1,100 pips. So what we're doing here in the last uh, few weeks is the New Zealand dollar, just like the euro, just as the Australian dollar, is having an opportunity to produce a more significant price correction. And uh, during this more significant price correction, the New Zealand dollar has managed to climb up to uh, 0.8067, which is the high from October 17. Now that is the number to watch in uh, the days ahead because it's going to be very important whether that level continues to um, establish itself as a level of resistance. There's a lot of currency pairs, including the Kiwi against the dollar, that have established ranges throughout this week. It's a weekly range that has been established, and this is how I see the current trend development with the euro dollar, the kiwi dollar, and also the Aussie dollar currency pair. And I'll show you examples in a few minutes with the other ones. But obviously this is a more significant price correction. It corrects uh, up to 50%, it looks like, of these losses, that the 1,100 fifths losses that the New Zealand dollar has had in the last month and a half or so. Now that we're moving a little bit above 0 0.80 cents level, that resistance at 0 0.86 to 7 is going to be the number to watch. While the Kiwi has not climbed uh, decisively above 0 0.80 just yet, it reached an intraday high so far today at 0.8025. So it's still staying below that previous resistance. That previous resistance was reached on Monday of this week. And that is the top of the existing uh, weekly range for the Kiwi against the dollar, 0.86 to 7. The bottom of the range is the, also the low from Tuesday, which is this low at uh, 0.7859. So what we're talking about is a range of about 200 pips that the Kiwi dollar exchange rate has been confined throughout this week. And it is not unusual, by the way, ahead of such an important event, it's a crucial event, this Sunday's European Union Summit, and obviously, to be extended. The weight of the markets could be extended up to Wednesday if uh, with the newly scheduled summit to take place by the 26th. So it's not unusual for a lot of major currency pairs to start fluctuating in ranges ahead of an important report or an important geopolitical event that could dictate the next price move and the direction for the market going forward. So the Kiwi dollar is not an exception, and it has been establishing this range that has not been broken yet throughout this week. Now, obviously, yesterday we made a move with the Kiwi declining towards the bottom of that range. It, it reached as low as 0.7898 yesterday. However, it stayed above the support and the bottom of the range. Let me draw a couple of lines here so that you can better visualize what I'm talking about. Here's the top of this weekly range, and here's the bottom of this weekly range. This is where the Kiwi dollar exchange rate has been confined throughout this week. So we approached the bottom of the range yesterday. We didn't break below it, and now, guess what? We're making a move 
that challenges the top of this range. And depending on whether or not there will be a breakout, either above the top of this range or below the bottom of this range, that's going to be the first clue that I will be looking for next week in order to find out what is going to be the next move for not only the New Zealand dollar, but also I'll show you similar developments with the euro and, and the Australian dollar versus the US dollar currency. So the Kiwi dollar uh, will watch that range. The top of the range, a break above here opens the door for the Kiwi dollar pair to uh, complete the next large quarter of 250 pips, which would be the large quarter between 0.80 and 0.8250. Those of you who are new to this webinar, who are not familiar with my quarters theory methodology, let me clue you in as far as what I'm talking about here. I look at the 1,000 pip ranges defined by two major whole numbers. For example, the 1,000 pip range for the Kiwi dollar exchange rate between the major whole number at 0.80, 80 cents, and 90 cents, 0.90. This is a range that has exactly 10 cents. When we calculate in terms of price interest points or pips, this equals a range of 1,000 pips. That is the range between each two major whole numbers, as I call them in my quarter theory, major large quarter points. So with my quarter theory, I divide these 1,000 pip ranges into four equal parts, or four large quarters of 250 pips. And I propose, I dare to propose, that uh, price fluctuations are not chaotic and they're not random, but rather they fluctuate in an organized, systematic effort to complete the large quarters from one large quarter point, targeting another large quarter point, and uh, in a systematic effort to also complete these entire 1,000 pip ranges. So in other words, with my quarters theory, I propose that every significant price move occurs from one large quarter point targeting another large quarter point. In the case of the Kiwi dollar currency pair, if that breakout occurs above the top of this weekly range, above the high at 0 0.8067, then that would open the door for further advancement of the Kiwi dollar exchange rate into the large quarter between 0.80 cents and a large quarter point above that could be targeted at 0.82. So that would be the bullish scenario for the Kiwi dollar exchange. The bearish scenario would be if this current push, which is I call a bullish trend wave that's been building up in the last couple of days on a, Euro, on a Kiwi dollar daily chart, if this bullish wave were to be successful, it has to break above the high of the first wave, which is 0.8067, the top of the weekly range. Only then will the second bullish wave become successful. But if it isn't, I explain in my book, The Quarters Theory, what happens in most instances. As a result of a trend wave failure, we can expect in most instances that a reversal trigger wave could develop in the opposite direction, which means that if this current second bullish wave fails, then we can anticipate that what I call a reversal trigger bearish Wave, which would target the bottom of this range at uh, 0.7859 and uh, could break below it and then we could see further weakness and uh, further decline for the Kiwi against the US dollar. Where to? Well, instead of the Kiwi actually working on a quarter between 0.80 and 0.8250, we could see the opposite. The uh, Kiwi dollar actually working on a quarter below 0.80 cents which would be the quarter between 0.80 and 0.7750, which could be the level targeted if the bottom of this range is uh, broken. So watch for these two scenarios to occur, uh, which one will occur in the days ahead throughout next week. And remember these scenarios because they are identical to the scenarios that we will uh, I will show you for the euro dollar pair and also for the Aussie dollar pair going forward. As far as the New Zealand inflation is concerned, on Monday, uh, the report might show us, according to the estimates, 
that we have a little bit of a less increase in inflationary pressures in uh, New Zealand. For the third quarter, inflation is expected to increase by 0.8%, which would be a smaller increase compared with the 1% quarter over quarter increase in the second quarter of 2011. In other words, if inflationary pressures are not rising, then that is not going to put any pressure on the central bank, which is the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, to consider hiking interest rates in the near future. As a matter of fact, as I have discussed throughout the last couple of months, it has become more and more apparent, uh, considering the latest interest rate announcements from major central banks, that all of them are pretty much focusing on economic growth and helping stimulate the, their economies rather than curbing inflationary pressures. And I am not expecting the Reserve Bank of New Zealand next week to be an exception uh, exception to that trend. More than likely, they will uh, acknowledge if inflation pressures are indeed not rising, according to the forecast as much, uh, they will acknowledge that and uh, they can reiterate that they're focusing on uh, economic growth. That means steering further away from monetary policy tightening, hiking interest rates which may not be very possible if uh, a country's central bank is focused on on uh, looser monetary policy rather than tightening. Now, going forward, we're going to see the second spotlight event next for next week also coming from uh, major central banks, the central bank with the Bank of Canada interest rate announcement, which is due on Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. I'm expecting the Bank of Canada to be no different than the other ones either, focusing on uh, economic growth, despite of the fact that the Canadian inflationary pressures, according to the Consumer Price Index this morning, increased more than expected, from 3.1% to 3.2%. However, they have not broken above the peak that we saw in Canadian inflation at 3.7% earlier this year. So they're still below that low. They're not very low. They're above 3%. Most major central banks do not like to see their uh, consumer price index as their main gauges of inflation above 3% level. They like to keep it around 2%. And uh, it is uh, a little higher. But, again, that's not uh, stopping the Bank of England, for example, after the spike in their inflation from uh, 4.5% to 5.2%. Or the report we saw on Tuesday, that didn't stop the Bank of England from stimulating their economy further and announcing additional quantitative ease of £75 billion pounds expansion of their asset purchase program. So that's why I'm saying the Bank of Canada is not likely to um, start tightening in this environment where there's expectations that the global economies are slowing down and... Um, on top of that, we have the Eurozone debt crisis that is far from over. Yet, uh, another um, important report next week will come from the United States with the Consumer Confidence Index, and that's going to kickstart a sequence of uh, notable U U.S. economic reports. Now, in uh, at the end of last month, beginning of October, during this webinar, I said that the markets are going to start a quest in the month of October in order to determine whether the U.S. Uh, economic conditions really are as bad as the Fed had painted them to be in their latest, latest output. And uh, so far, so good, actually. If you've been paying attention to the U.S. economic reports throughout the month of October, so far, they have a more positive and more optimistic undertone. And looking at a glance, of course, at the consensus forecast, because that's all we have right now. We have to wait until the actual reports hit the news wires to see what the actual numbers are throughout next week. But at a glance, looking at the forecasts for the sequence of U.S. economic data throughout next week, it looks to me that if these forecasts are accurate, we might have another week of more optimistic U.S. economic data. Don't get me wrong. situation is not good in the U.S., nor it is good around the world. But in a new normal, 
we have to take even the smallest improvement as a positive. So the U.S. Consumer Confidence Index is uh, expected to show a bit of an improvement with a reading of 46.2, which would be a little bit higher than 45.4 in the previous month. So that could be um, the first of the positive economic reports, sequence of positive economic reports from the United States. Now, uh, on Tuesday night, we're going to see another inflation report from down under with the Australian Consumer Price Index, the main measure of inflation preferred by the Reserve Bank of Australia. And uh, the Australian Consumer Price Index is also expected to show inflation pressures not rising as much in the third quarter, up by 0.7% according to the forecast, a little bit lower than a 0.9% quarter over quarter increase in the second quarter of 2011. Uh, lower inflation pressures in Australia and New Zealand, I explained earlier, could reduce the odds that these central banks might consider tightening monetary policy support. And um, watch for that to be a potential risk event for the Australian dollar, especially if the consumer price index is uh, lower than expected in the third quarter. Now, uh, when it comes to the Australian dollar developments, I uh, promise that I will show you very similar trend developments as they were with the New Zealand dollar. So let's go ahead and take a look at the daily chart of the Aussie versus the dollar. All right, here it is. Just as the New Zealand dollar, oh, excuse me now, hold on one second, let's change it. Okay, just as the New Zealand dollar, the Australian dollar has had similar developments. And these similar developments have been the establishment of a weekly range. Just as the Kiwi, the Aussie dropped uh, from as high as $0.0764 to recent lows at uh, 0 0.9387, this is a decline of uh, about 1,400 pips. Uh, during this price correction of these losses, we have exceeded the normal 50% uh, retracement level, and we're pushing more um, towards the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement at this point. And during this... Um, Strengthening of the Australian dollar for nine consecutive trading sessions, by the way. We have seen the Aussie reaching as high as $1.0370. Now, this is not that surprising because the next level of resistance was this point here, the $1.0397. That I explained last week should be an important area to watch. And um, throughout this week, we've seen the Australian dollar failing to break, at least at this point, at this minute. Now, of course, things could change if we get to see some sort of, uh, you know, optimistic news. This has been a uh, what I called a, quote, better late than never optimism rally that we're seeing in the markets, starting last week and throughout pretty much this week. And uh, if that rally continues, then the Australian dollar uh, could break above this resistance at $1.0370, but then it could encounter a resistance at $1.0397. So be careful that even if we break above this level, the next level of resistance is just a little bit below $1.04 level. If the Australian dollar manages to muster the strength to take out all of these two resistance levels, then the door would be wide open to $1.05 large quarter point, and maybe even higher than that, maybe even two recent highs which were, surprise, surprise, a little bit above the next large quarter point, above dollar five, dollar zero seven fifty. Now, that, of course, is the bullish scenario, similar to the one I described for the Kiwi earlier. But a break has to occur in order for that scenario to happen, a break above the top of this weekly range, weekly channel. Now, the Aussie dollar pair is approaching the top again, after failing to break below the bottom yesterday, the bottom is the low at $1.0117. So now we'll see whether the Australian dollar will be capable of uh, breaking above $1.0370. It's already reaching $1.0364 as we speak in a trading session today. So pay close attention to the top of this weekly range and then the resistance a little bit below dollar enforcement. Um, if that uh, high is broken above, that would confirm the development of another second bullish trend wave on the Aussie dollar daily chart. 
which would be technically a bullish development. And if the resistance at the dollar and four cents level is broken above, then the door is open to dollar and five, and maybe even higher, as I said earlier. The bearish for the Aussie scenario, however, would be a failure of this second bullish wave, failure to break above dollar zero three seven, failure to break above resistance at dollar zero three ninety seven. Could uh, reverse the Australian dollar lower to target the support at the dollar zero one seventeen, and a break below that level could send it to parity and possibly even below parity, provided, of course, that uh, we get to see some uh, massive risk aversion if the optimism rally starts fizzling next week. But as you can see, very, very similar trend developments for the Australian dollar uh, and uh, the Kiwi dollar currency pair, and as you would witness for the euro versus the US dollar as well. That's going to lead us to the tentative event, and it is tentative because, as I said earlier, the new summit is supposed to take place by Wednesday, October 26th. So I put it on a list of top 10 events as a tentative all-day event for Wednesday, but it could happen earlier than Wednesday. It could come on Monday or Tuesday. But it has to happen, as promised by the European Union leaders, by the 26th, which is Wednesday. I have explained since last week that there's so much riding on this summit. The G20 ministers earlier this week uh, after the G20 meeting, they said that they, quote, expect the October 23rd summit on Sunday to decisively address the current challenges through a comprehensive plan, and the quote. Comprehensive plan is what was also promised by European Union leaders. But throughout this week, we have seen the German Chancellor and other European leaders attempting to calm the market's expectations or to play down, in other words, the expectations of the market as to what may be announced at the European Union Summit on Sunday. And as I said, to quote my exact words from my weekly outlook last week, if Sunday's summit or Wednesday's summit, for that matter, fail to give us a comprehensive on how to contain the debt crisis. If it fails to deliver anything short of spectacular, the market is really having some very high hopes for these summits. And if they disappoint, do not be surprised to see a risk aversion setting in and the euro being put under pressure once again. Uh, so, a lot is riding on the summit, and uh, it, it, without a doubt, will be the main event for uh, next week. Now, let me show you the uh, daily trend developments with the euro-dollar currency pair. We'll take a look at the daily chart of the euro versus the U.S. dollar here. And uh, just as I was explaining earlier with the Kiwi and... Uh, the New Zealand dollars. I see ranges, a range that has been established for the euro dollar pair as well throughout this week. And here is the. Okay, let me adjust this really quickly. Here. Okay, and it's not cooperating this line. Anyway, you get the point. Um. I don't want to cause any more dead air on this program, so I'm not going to fight this, this line here. I'm trying to move it a little bit further above. Okay. Um, the euro has declined in the last month and a half from a size dollar 45.48 to lows that were almost at the dollar and 30 cents level. Almost, because the euro found support that. Uh, Lows at the dollar thirty one forty five, about one hundred forty five pips above a dollar and thirty cents. Needless to say, that was fourteen hundred pips of a decline for the euro versus the dollar produced in the last couple of months. 
So the strengthening of the euro here on this optimism rally is not the reversal of the euro's downtrend, as I explained in the last several weeks on this program. It is simply a price correction out of the euro's losses. A certain percentage, up to 50%, up to 61.8% Fibonacci retracement, to me, is a normal retracement level. Now, if the retracement begins to exceed the 50 to 61.8 retracement percentage uh, range, then it becomes a bit of a red flag for me at least that could signal a complete 100% retracement. But as long as the retracement is within its normal ranges and as, as long as the euro stays below dollar 40 cents, which is about, about 61.8% retracement point, this is nothing but just a price correction. The euro would have to go all the way up to break above dollar forty one forty eight to me in order for me to consider that hey you know what this is the con continuation of the multi year bullish trend for the euro versus the dollar. If the euro fails to do that, uh, we're simply correcting here. And uh, during this price correction, the euro rallied on hopes and optimism for nine consecutive trading sessions, reaching as high as dollar uh, thirty nine thirteen on Monday. That has established itself as the uh, weekly range time for the euro versus the dollar. It is approaching that level as we speak today with an intraday high so far at the dollar thirty-eight ninety-nine, just a tad below the dollar thirty-nine cent level. But the number to watch is dollar thirty-nine thirteen, because depending on whether or not the euro breaks either above the top of this range or below the bottom, which is the low uh, on Tuesday at uh, $1.3652, and yesterday the euro got really close to that level, but found support above it. It did not break below it. Yesterday the euro, euro stayed four pips above the bottom of the weekly range, and now we're seeing it starting to top up. Nothing usual, as I said earlier, for uh, major currency pairs ahead of an important event, especially having a major impact for the future fate of the euro-dollar exchange rate, for the euro-dollar exchange rate to uh, start uh, establishing a range ahead of the event. So depending on whether or not there will be a top above the bottom, uh, uh, a breakout above the top of this uh, range or below the bottom of this range, we're going to have to patiently watch and observe to find out what the next uh, clues for the next price move for the euro-dollar pair could be. Now, the bullish scenario for the euro would be if it breaks above the top of this range, which is the resistance at dollar thirty-nine thirteen. A break above that level could open the door for the euro-dollar pair to move towards the major large quarter point at the dollar and forty cents, and continue that price correction and continue the bullish trend wave sequence with another second bullish. However, I have to warn about what I would call a cluster of resistances that are ahead for the euro-dollar pair that we need to be cautious about. What I'm referring to is a number of resistance levels. So let's start with the dollar thirty-nine thirteen, which is the closest and most obvious one. Remember, recently the euro reached the size dollar thirty-nine thirty-six, the high from September fifteenth. That's the next resistance level, shortly above dollar thirty-nine thirteen. Remember the euro finding support here for a few months when it was trading in a range, and the support of that range, the bottom of that range, was dollar thirty-nine sixty-nine, the low from May the twenty-third, which is shortly above dollar thirty-nine thirteen and the dollar thirty-nine thirty-six. This is what I mean by saying a cluster of resistance levels. And uh, do not be surprised if the euro begins to lose momentum, if it starts encountering and gets a little tired, if you will, when it starts encountering resistance level after resistance level after resistance level that are within 20, 30 pips from each other. Dollar thirty nine thirty nine thirty six, dollar thirty nine sixty nine, and to add to the number of resistance levels. The dollar and forty cents major large quarter, which is the dividing line between the two one thousand fifth ranges, where the euro dollar exchange rate has been trading throughout two thousand and eleven. 
that is the 1,000 pip range between dollar forty and a dollar fifty. And most recently, we know that on this program, the successful 1,000 pip range transition of the euro dollar exchange rate into the 1,000 pip range below the dollar thirties, between dollar thirty and a dollar forty. So, if the euro uh, breaks above dollar thirty nine thirteen, that would be the confirmation of second bullish wave is successful. That's the bullish scenario for the euro. But be careful about the cluster of resistances in the 100 pip range between dollar thirty nine and a dollar forty. The bearish for the euro scenario would be uh, dependent on whether or not the second bullish wave will be successful and whether these resistance levels will be successfully broken above. If the euro starts losing momentum, don't be surprised to see the euro coming under pressure again. Challenging the low from Tuesday, which is the bottom of this uh, current weekly range at the dollar thirty six fifty two, and a break below that level could quickly send the euro back to uh, the large quarter point at the dollar thirty five cents. And recently, we had support here established on uh, September twelfth during the first initial decline of the euro about a month and a half ago, that pushed the euro below dollar forty cents. Broke all of these two support levels with the dollar thirty nine sixty nine, dollar thirty eight thirty seven, and then moved it to the large quarter point at the dollar thirty five cents with an intraday low on September twelfth at the dollar thirty four ninety eight. May I explained in the last several weeks you didn't really think that that was a coincidence, kind of a number, completely random number. Yes, it might seem like a completely random number, but it was a two pips of an overshoot below an important level of the quarter steer. That was challenged at that time, which was the large quarter point at the dollar thirty-five cents. So um, that could be the move to dollar thirty-five cents that could occur if the euro weakens, risk aversion sets in. There is a disappointment from the European Union summit outcome, and uh, there is a break below dollar thirty-six fifty-two. Going forward, we are going to continue uh, after the European Union Summit to monitor the sequence of U.S. economic data. The new home sales and durable goods orders are due on Wednesday morning. They're expected to be a little bit more positive. New home sales are forecast to show an increase to 302,000 from 295,000. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, nothing spectacular but in a new normal environment, we have to take even, what is it, 7,000 new homes. I mean, we're talking about the largest economy in the world, the U.S. economy. 7,000 more new homes sold compared with the previous month is nothing. But still, if it's a little bit higher than it was the previous month in a new normal, we have to take that as a positive. At least I have. Uh, then on Thursday, uh, well, on Wednesday afternoon is the Reserve Bank of New Zealand interest rate announcement, which I already mentioned earlier when I talked about the New Zealand dollar and the consumer price index. If uh, inflation is not rising, uh, with most major central banks, or rather all of them, focusing on uh, monetary policy, steering away from monetary policy, tightening, focusing on growth rather than curbing inflationary pressures. Uh, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand will not be an exception. There will be no changes more than likely to their existing uh, interest rate. As a matter of fact, they might even hint that if uh, economic conditions deteriorate, they might consider a reduction in the rate. And that could also turn out to be a risk factor for the New Zealand that could jeopardize uh, the further continuation of the New Zealand dollar ascend versus the U.S. dollar. Uh, we have another major central bank. Uh, today, the uh, dollar is producing a new record low versus the Japanese yen. I'm not sure if you're paying attention to the dollar yen pair, but it has managed to break below the previous post-World War II record low at uh, 79.80, wasn't it? And we have a new low. We'll take a look at the, uh, the dollar yen pair very shortly. And the Bank of Japan, it will be, it should, the Bank of Japan is not going to change their existing ultra accommodative monetary policy. But it will be interesting to see if they haven't intervened by then, which I think that there's a heightened odds now that if the dollar continues to break lower against the yen, that the Bank of Japan will consider 
another intervention. And um, if they haven't intervened by Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, it will be interesting to see what they're going to say about uh, the Japanese yen's persistent uh, strength, which obviously is a big problem for the Japanese exporters and could threaten the economic recovery in Japan. But other than that, uh, as far as economic policies, the rate would stay more than likely close to in a target band between 0 and 0.1% by the Bank of Japan. I wouldn't be surprised if they announced more quantitative easing or any other stimulus measures. Now, earlier this week uh, on my All Things Forex program, daily program, I've been uh, talking about the Bank of, uh, well, now the Ministry of Finance and the Japanese government announcing a new program that was uh, designed to help exporters and to uh, hopefully curb the strength of the Japanese currency. Um, today, there was an announcement of uh, another $2 trillion of a spending package by the Japanese government to support exporters and their subcontractors to deal with the strong Japanese yen. Um, the uh, finance minister had a little bit of a verbal intervention, if you will, today. He said the current Japanese yen foreign exchange rate does not support the sound profit levels for exporters. Uh, a lot of officials keep saying that they're carefully monitoring the uh, Japanese uh, yen's uh, strength. And with the dollar actually breaking lower today, and let's take a look at the daily chart of the dollar versus the Japanese yen really quickly here. With the dollar breaking to new record lows uh, below the, the previous one here at uh, 75.94, the low from August 19th, we have a new low today, new record low today at 75.79 yen. If uh, the dollar continues to break lower, could it go to 75 yen? Absolutely. If there should be a decisive breakout, which today's move it isn't, it's just an overshoot by what is it, about less than 20 pips. Uh, if there's a decisive breakout below these record lows, then 75 yen level, which is also an important level in my quarter theory, being the large quarter point, there could be challenge. But don't be surprised to see an actual intervention or any other kind of announcement by the Bank of Japan. And by other announcements, I mean Maybe the Bank of Japan following the footsteps of the Swiss National Bank, which they have to have to resort after their intervention attempts were unsuccessful, after cutting interest rates to zero percent, the Swiss National Bank resorted to what they tried in 1978, and that is to establish an actual floor under the euro for the euro Swiss franc exchange rate. Don't be surprised to see either an intervention or something else being announced by the Bank of Japan to curb the strength of the Japanese yen, uh, of the Japanese currency. Because the spending package and these new measures that the Bank of Japan and the Ministry of Finance and the Japanese government is announcing hardly is going to uh, curb the strength of the, the currency. There has to be something more that uh, could work as the Swiss National Bank's uh, recent decision has actually worked and has prevented the euro from dropping for, with the Swiss National Bank's commitment and promise to do whatever is necessary, in, intervene as much as necessary to, cur to uh, support that uh, floor for the euro-Swiss exchange rate at 1.20. And by the way, the euro is uh, breaking a little bit lower, below uh, uh, 1.23 level uh, as of yesterday uh, versus the Swiss franc, reaching finding support today at a little bit above 1.22. For those of you who follow the Euro-Swiss franc developments, but I think that the Bank of Japan is jealously uh, watching what the Swiss National Bank has done and wishes perhaps to do the same. And we'll see whether they will be forced into considering some new measures to curb the Japanese yen strength. Obviously, if one speculates that there will be an intervention or uh, any other measures taken by the Ministry of Finance of Japan or the uh, Japanese uh, Central Bank, which acts on uh, the request and orders by the Ministry of Finance, 
there might be a speculative opportunity uh, if there is an intervention. Because the last time the Bank of Japan intervened, you would recall that was uh, over here. We saw the dollar jumping by about 400 cents from the previous record low at 76.30 yen to as high as uh, 80.23 yen. That was about a little bit less than 400 cents. Could we see a spike like this heading into next week if the Bank of Japan decides to intervene? I'm not excluding the possibility of that. Will that be enough to reverse the multi-year bearish trend for the dollar against the Japanese yen? I doubt it, but it could be a uh, temporary move to the upside in the amounts of uh, hundreds of pips. can't really tell you what, whether it will be three, four hundred pips. It will be a significant spike higher if uh, the Bank of Japan intervenes or if there's any other measures that are being announced. Going forward, uh, the U.S. economic data sequence will continue with uh, the main event from the United States next week, which is the Gross Domestic Product Report. This is the main measure of economic activity and growth in the world's largest economy, which is still the U.S. economy. And uh, it may add to the sequence of uh, more optimistic economic data. According to the consensus forecast, the U.S. economy is expected, this is, by the way, the preliminary estimate for the third quarter GDP. This is the first of three. So the numbers will be revised going forward in the months ahead. But the first preliminary estimate tends to have the most impact. And that report is due on Thursday. And it could be an optimistic one. According to the consensus forecast, the U.S. economy is expected to grow as much as 2.4% in a third quarter. That is up from 1.3% in the second quarter. And the actual revised number by the Bureau of Economic Analysis, which issues the gross domestic product numbers here in the United States, the actual real GDP growth in the second quarter was less than 1.3%. It was 0.4%, which is pretty dismal. So this would be a significant improvement if... Um, we get to see uh, the GDP estimate for the third quarter showing us that the U.S. economy gained momentum from 0.4 or 1.3 percent to 2.4% significant improvement in U.S. economic growth. And it could add to the optimism. Now, the reason why I'm saying that we should watch the U.S. economic data is because there are still some Federal Reserve Board members including the one yesterday that called for the Fed to start buying mortgage-backed securities to help the housing market, which is, in the essence, more quantitative easing. So QE number three is still not behind us. There's still a potential, if U.S. economy uh, economic conditions get worse, that the Fed might be forced into doing a third round of quantitative easing. But if the U.S. economy improves, and that's what we see throughout the month of October, the Fed does not meet in October. Their next meeting is for November 1st and 2nd. So it's a good month, as I said in the beginning of this month, to really pay attention to the U.S. economic data, engage whether economic conditions are getting worse or if we're getting some optimistic developments that could steer the Fed further away from doing another round of QE, uh, quantitative easing. So if the um, GDP improves and strengthens uh, as expected, that would be another one of those positive U.S. economic reports that could reduce the odds that the Fed will be forced into doing QA number three. Of course, if the Fed decides to do QA number three, you know that that would be a negative fundamental uh, development for the U.S. dollar. For the debasement of the U.S. currency, the dollar could come under further additional pressure. But if we get to see the chances and the odds diminishing for QE number three, the market, after all this craziness with the news from the Eurozone is over with, the market might actually start pricing that into the U.S. dollar exchange rate and might count it as a positive. We're also expecting the jobless claims on Thursday from the U.S. 403 and 4,000 is the consensus forecast number from 403,000 in the previous month. Not a significant improvement in the uh, U.S. Jo uh, jobs market, but uh, the positive is that the five-week average or so 
from the U.S. jobless claims has now been uh, the lowest level since April. So that's the only positive there. The number, if you listen to this program on a regular basis uh, every Friday morning, you know what the number to watch is when it comes to the jobless claims. If one wants to see a leading indicator of improvement in the U.S. jobs market, the number is 375,000. Jobless claims, according to economists, have to decline below 375,000 in order for us to see the signs of significant improvement in the U.S. jobs market and for the unemployment rate to start seeing a reduction. Well, that number has not been reached and broken below yet. Jobless claims are still lingering around 400,000. And then the final economic report uh, for next week of the top 10 spotlight events is going to also come from the United States with the personal income and outlays. Both of them are expected to improve, actually, from the previous month. Another potentially positive, provided that the consensus forecasts are accurate, could be another potentially positive uh, economic report from the United States. Personal spending is expected to increase by 0.6% month over month from 0.2% in a previous month. And uh, personal income is also expected to increase by 0.4% from uh, declining by 0.1% in the previous month. And uh, that will wrap up our list of top 10 spotlight events to pay attention to for next week. Now you are prepared for what might come ahead in a week, uh, in next week, and uh, pay attention to the scenarios that I described earlier for the major currency affairs that we discussed. I'd like to invite you to join me on a daily basis and listen to my daily All Things Forex uh, live program, Monday through Friday on All Things Forex. Dot com it is also syndicated, as I mentioned earlier, on FX3.com, where you can listen to it as well. For now, thank you for attending this webinar. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, logging on to listen to these weekly Outlook webinars every Friday. I'd like to thank to our, uh, our friends at FX3.com for putting the series of webinars. Have a great day and a great weekend. Happy trading, and I will see you again next Friday at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Time.